What's up YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again and today we are doing our first review of the return of Robbie Vapes channel and in typical Robbie Vapes fashion we will be doing a review that is about three or four months overdue. That's right today we're going to be reviewing the Caliburn G. The what arguably one of the better devices out there from what I've heard. I haven't tried it myself yet so this will be my first hands-on with this thing and we're gonna get down and dirty with it. Check out what's in the box. Do a quick unboxing and then we're gonna vape on it for a few days. Go back up top here and of course give you my, my final thoughts on the device. So with that in mind, what do you say we get down and dirty with the Caliburn G and find out what exactly the hype is all about? All right, we are down and dirty with the Caliburn G. I got some gloves on because I know you guys don't like looking at my fingers. So I figured this would be the best way to avoid that and just kind of go from there. Caliburn G, what's in the packaging? Switch around like that. Uh, one Caliburn G device. 2.8 Caliburn G pods with pre-installed mesh coils, type C USB cable, and a user's manual. So that's what we have to look forward to. Let's crack this guy open and see what's inside. Uh, also on the back is where you can find the color. So right down here, you can see Caliburn G uh, pod system black. This is a CRC version. This is a child resistant uh, container which is actually a good thing in Canada because if it is not child resistant, it is now illegal based on the new laws that came into place. But I'll have a video on that later on. Uh, and of course, there's some stipulations around the child resistance and everything like that. But again, we'll talk about that in another video. In the meantime, let's crack this guy open and see what's inside. The downside to wearing gloves is, of course, it is very difficult to peel plastic on here. So I'm kind of just making a mess of it. There we go. Okay, it's coming off now. Throw that off to the side. Here we go. All right, so it looks like it just slides out maybe. There we go. Okay, so here's the internal packaging. Wearing gloves makes this so much more difficult. And let's crack it open. Another seal on the back here. And take a look at what's inside. And as we open it up, we see all the instructions and everything fall out. You have a little booklet here on how to fill up the pod. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. You then have your user manual right here. I'll take a quick look through it before kind of going through everything, but that'll be interesting nonetheless. Uh, you also have this little sheet here, which is, I think it's actually about the childproof locking. So that's actually pretty cool. And of course, right here, we have the device itself looking nice and shiny. Bit of a gold trimmer on the button, which I actually really enjoy. I think that's a really cool feature, but we'll see if it actually does anything to the experience of the vape. And last but not least, we have this little box in here. And this is going to be where I'm assuming the cable is and some extra pods and stuff like that. Yeah, so we have an extra pod right here. And as we dig deeper down in here, oh, I'm gonna have to destroy this box, get it out. As we dig deeper down, we have a very tightly packed and very small USB-C to USB uh, 2.0, I assume, uh, USB cable. So. Uh, it's very small, and one of the things I'm going to test is if this does pass through, meaning if you can vape on it while it's charging, because if you can, then this cable is basically useless for uh, the features of this device. But we'll find out as we get into it. Uh, that's the unboxing portion. Let's move on. I'm going to fill this guy up real quick on camera, and then I'm going to start vaping it. Come back in a couple days, and I'll let you know my thoughts. So we got our bottle of juice, the Guanga Weiss. Looks like the fill hole is just right there, the little rubber stoppy thing. Open this guy up. And I assume, yeah, so it's got like a push release. So as you can see, when you push it in, it opens up a little bit. So let's try and fill it. Yep, yeah, it's filling up. Don't know if the camera's catching that, but it is definitely filling up there.
and it's full. Uh, the other thing I want to do is actually measure how much juice this capacity is, or how, what the juice capacity actually is on this thing. Uh, probably says in the instruction manual, but uh, when we go back up top, I'll talk about that as well. I think I might do like a syringe test where I'm actually measuring how much juice this thing takes exactly to the milliliter and to the decimal place of the milliliter. Uh, other than that, let's turn it on. Five clicks, turn it on. Looks like it's blue. I believe that represents like a medium power battery. So it will need to be charged here pretty quickly. And uh, I'll, again, I'll test out the pass-through ability and see if it can actually be vaped on while it's charging. So I'll see you guys in a bit and then we'll go back up top to finish this review off. All right guys, we are back up top with the Calibern G. And before we get into the pros and cons, I wanna talk about pricing here real quick. So this device retails for anywhere from 30 to $40 Canadian. And of course, anywhere in the 25-ish range US. I found anywhere from as low as 22 to 30 US, but on average, roughly about $25 US. Beyond that, the pods themselves, or replaceable pods, retail for $8 US for a pack of two, or roughly about $12 Canadian for a pack of two as well, which brings cost of the pods down to $4 US each, or about $6 Canadian each. Beyond that, the replacement coils, which I should know before I get into that, uh, my device did not come with the interchangeable coil pod. It actually only came with the disposables. So I got two disposables uh, instead of one disposable and one interchangeable one where you can change out the coil. The coils do, however, retail for around uh, $16 Canadian. So about $4 each coil because you get a pack of four and roughly about $12 US, again, give or take. So roughly $3 US per coil in that pack of four. Moving on from there, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons here real quick. I'm gonna start things off with the cons. There's one big con here that I haven't seen many people mention, and that is a fire button. It is incredibly sensitive. And while that can be a good thing because there's no lag between you hitting this button and inhaling your vapor, uh, unfortunately, the biggest downside is when you go to turn it off. So I'm gonna call this to my microphone, go to turn it off, which is five clicks, and you can hear just how much it's firing during those five clicks. So that's now off. You could hear it firing the entire time. Every click it fired for like that half quarter second kind of thing. And where that really becomes a con is that's gonna burn out your coils really fast on this guy. Uh, I did get about five days or about a week, sorry, out of the first pod I had. Uh, I'm now on pod number two, but again, I got disposable pods, not the replacement coil pods. Uh, so that's gonna be a little expensive going forward if I have to replace them every week just because um, I'm firing it every time I turn it off. Uh, same thing if you think about trying to leave it on. Unfortunately, if you leave this in your pocket or anything else like that, it will definitely auto fire on you, causing you to burn the coil even further. The next con I wanna talk about is the USB type C cable that's included. It is super tiny. It's like maybe, I don't know, two or three inches, you know, unfolded. I haven't even opened this up yet because there's really no point. I will never use this, uh, which makes it kind of a useless feature and a useless add on to the actual cost of the device. Um, so what I do is I actually have a bunch of Amazon cables that are USB type C and use those to charge this guy. And one of the biggest reasons why this is such con, and you know, I will say this, if you're just using it, put it aside, charge it, that cable will do the job for you. But I mean, I think a lot of people have USB type C cables laying around already. So it's not a big deal. But the biggest thing here is that this actually does do pass through charging, meaning I can vape on this thing while it's charging. However, with the cable they included, that's pretty much impossible because of how short the cable is. So I just use an Amazon cable, plug it into my car, uh, plug it into my computer or something like that. So that way while I'm kind of in the midst of needing a vape, but this thing needs to be charged, I can do so and vape on it at the same time. My last con is actually again, very nitpicky. Uh, this is probably true to most pod systems in all honesty, and that's just the size of the pod. These guys are super small. Uh, it's supposed to fit up to like 2.1 mils. If I'm going off memory correctly, I'll have a little disclaimer here, make sure if I'm right or wrong, uh, but you get the idea. And, you know, I, I felt myself filling this thing up a lot. And now I'm a fairly heavy vapor, but like, I wouldn't say I'm the heaviest. And to have to fill this thing, you know, four or five times a day is super frustrating, um, especially since I don't feel like I'm even using close to the 10 mils of juice I should be getting from five fills. I think I'm using like seven. So realistically, you know, it's advertised 2.1, but I would say this is probably closer to 1.5 mils for capacity. I could be wrong on that. Maybe I'm, you know, misjudging my fills or something, but yeah, from what I can see and how much I still have left the original bottle I bought almost two weeks ago, you know, I've still got probably six or seven mils left. And yet, actually, I think I have it right here. So 
maybe four mils, four or five mils. It's just below the label there at the bottom. I don't know if it's going to focus in on that, but yeah, it's just below the label at the bottom. So, you know, call it four, four mils or so, uh, which means I've gone through about 26 mils in 12 days. And yet if I'm filling it five times a day and it's supposedly 10 mils, well, that would work out to 60 mils. And yet I've only gone through, you know, 28, 29. I, I know sometimes they overfill these bottles and they're capable of holding about 32 mils, but like realistically there there's no way it's filling up as much as what it says it is uh just based on that fact alone so something to consider you know i think it's a little bit small but teach teach your own and uh it's it's a little thing and it's a little bit nitpicky just having to fill it up as often as i do talking about the pros here there are a lot of pros to talk about this is a great device honestly despite the cons i just mentioned there's a lot of good here uh the first thing is the flavor on this thing is fantastic the airflow is deceivingly good despite how it may look on the side there where you have that little tiny pinprick hole, it produces a lot more airflow than I expected. So kudos to them on that, that's good. As to the flavor, of course. And finally, the battery life on this thing, especially compared to the original Caliburn, it's only I think 100 mil milliamp hours more or somewhere in that range. And yet I feel like I'm getting so much more out of this device on a single charge. And I think what adds to that is the fact that it charges so quickly once I plug it in, it's usually about 25 minutes to half an hour to fully charge this thing. And that's from a computer, not from a fast charging um, charge block like you'd get from, say, a Samsung phone or something. So super impressed with the charge time. Plus, it goes by even faster when you can vape on it while it's charging. So, um, you know, overall, this device is definitely one I'd recommend if you're into the pod systems and you want to get rid of these, you know, disposable pods that are just building up in your home or in your garbage or in the landfills. Uh, this is kind of the way to go. It's a little bit more economic. I wish mine came with the uh, replacement coil pod, not just two disposable ones. I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or not. Something to look into for me, obviously, but uh, good to know either way. And yeah, I feel like, you know, throwing out one of these versus throwing out, you know, even just this little pod here, it's night and day difference. So I really can't, uh, can't complain too much on it overall. Uh, so yeah, so overall, I'd recommend it if you're interested in pods and uh, especially if you're on disposables, this is an easy way to save money and to uh, kind of enjoy that same hit you'd get from a disposable, yet in a, in a reusable uh, pod device. So that's pretty much it. That's all I want to talk about. That's going to be it for today's video. Let me guys know what you guys thought in the comments down below because I know I'm four months late to this thing. If you already have one of these, what are your thoughts on it? Are you still using it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know either way. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. And until then, I will see you in the next one, and happy vaping, YouTube.